universal legendary commander sculptures and gems are really hard to come by in rise of kingdoms so when you decide to spend them on a commander you want to make sure that it's a commander that's not just good for today but is also going to be good for the next couple of months or ideally will be really good for a few years and right now there are a lot of really good commanders in the meta today that I think could be falling off over the next six to 12 months so in today's video we're going to be talking about a handful of commanders that you should consider avoiding your investment in because something better might be coming down the pipeline soon but first what's going on guys cheers now really quick before we jump in if you guys like rise of kingdoms content consider subscribing to the channel a lot of you guys aren't subscribed and click the thumbs up button it really helps out this video it'll put it in front of more rise of kingdoms players there's no sponsor to this video or anything like that so any support or engagement on these videos is greatly appreciated without further ado let's jump right into the video and first I want to discuss kind of what we're talking about in this video and that is open field PvP performance okay this video is not about rallies or garrisons or anything like that this video is just about investing in commanders for open field PvP and in order to do that we have a couple of different tiers as you can see on the left here okay in this safe tier I've already pre-filled this just to save you guys some time okay if you invest in any of the commanders that you see here right now I think that they're probably going to be safe for at least the next year or longer I think these are all meta commanders right now and I think that they're so good they're going to stay in a meta five army lineup in some capacity over the next year or longer now the caution tier is for commanders that could fit into your meta five army lineup but they're starting to show their age or they kind of lack a competitive advantage to where they could easily be power crept out of the game in one or two commander cycles commanders in the concern category are a little bit worse these are going to be commanders that do have maybe one or two viable armies that you could run but they're really starting to struggle to keep up with the meta at all and I think have a much higher probability of being replaced within the next commander cycle for their given troop type and then at the very top of the list we have the warning category and commanders that fall into this category are going to be commanders that have maybe only one or fewer viable open field marches but they're generally kind of seen as outclassed at this point first up is Justinian landing himself in the caution tier and remember this is for open field PvP okay and I think it's pretty obvious why Justinian would fall into this category you can use him in the open field today right now with really good success success but the problem is he's kind of just a vanilla beat stick he just has a single target damage factor he's got some tanky stats here a little bit of health a little bit of March speed on the second skill but really besides just a single target damage factor and some nice stats he's not really doing that much that really moves the needle and so all it would take for example would be them to release a cavalry commander that deals 2700 direct damage factor and oh wait a minute they already have that okay so obviously I'm being a little bit facetious here but there's no like insane like debuffs or crazy support that you're doing here the massive wall of text on the active skill really only applies for rally attacks all this stuff is useless in the open field right so yeah I mean there's really not much to say he's kind of just begging to be power crept out of the game and I think soon enough he probably will next up is Boudicca Prime now remember this video is not me telling you that these commanders are bad commanders okay I want you I want to be very clear because I don't want to go through a bunch of stupid comments from people who completely missed the point of this video this video is commanders that you should consider not investing in I'm not saying that they're bad today okay you can use Boudicca Prime today you'll be popping off and I, that's just the truth but when we look at you know the next year in Rise of Kingdoms I think Boudicca is probably going to struggle to keep up with the competitive advantage I think if you're an Archer main and you're running two or three Archer armies then you'll probably continue to use Boudicca for a while but for a majority of players who aren't Archer mains or they're free to play players you might struggle to find a use for Boudicca Prime over the next year right we already have Zhuge Liang with Herman Prime as like the single best Archer army and so I think Boudicca Prime will struggle a little bit over the next year to the point where I would consider maybe not investing in her because there could be better things coming down the line now to be clear I think Boudicca Prime is a better commander to invest in than Justinian especially because you can keep her at 5551 and you'll get probably 90 percent of her value so she's still a pretty good budget build but there's no AoE on 
her kit here and yes her debuff is actually really nice but her March speed debuff is outclassed by a couple of different commanders at this point namely Huo and I think Liu Che as well so there's a lot of better March speed debuffs in the game already and with Herman Prime coming into the game the poison stacks are going to make pretty much everybody take even more than this from a skill damage perspective assuming that there's no Tamiris on the field removing those poison stacks and something about her stat distribution it makes me feel like she should be performing even better than she does in the open fields and I think the problem is that you only get your tanky stats under 80 percent so you've already lost like a really big opportunity remember a lot of people when they hit yellow they start to retreat back to their city and that's for good reason the first 50 percent of that health bar is where a lot of your damage comes from and for 20 percent of that you don't even have any defense here okay so I don't know there's just something going on here where unless you have like really good legendary gear Boudicca just seems to be you would think that she would be tankier especially because she takes 25 percent less skill damage I don't know all right I've pissed off the cavalry mains and I've pissed off the archer mains let's piss off the infantry mains okay Guan Yu lands himself in the caution tier again Guan Yu I used him in my recent KBK he pops off he can deal a ton of damage but just look at what this category is called it's called caution okay I'm trying to caution you guys to keep your eyes open and think about like will Guan Yu continue to be really really powerful over the next year year and a half I think his silence is really nice and a 2000 damage factor three target AoE still holds up in the meta till this day and he's been in the game for years and so his active skill is doing a lot of the heavy lifting especially because his fourth skill does an additional single target damage which is really nice but besides that he's pretty squishy in the open field he gets 30 percent attack and 15 percent march speed and honestly march speed is really what infantry needs but we're seeing a lot of commanders in the game right now like for example cpo prime he has more attack the same amount of march speed additional march speed Plus he gains health on top of that extra stats. You look at Liu Che, he has more March speed. He's a little bit tankier with that 20% skill damage taken reduction. And yes, he has, you know, less attack points, but he has 20% defense. And so overall more stats. And I think that the defense points there really come into play when it comes to the tankiness for infantry. Plus he's dealing a higher, a higher damage factor, just straight up five targets, 2250. And so when you take all of that into account and the direction that the meta is going into, I think that Guan Yu is starting to hover on the edges of the meta. And I just want you guys to be cautious about investing in him in 2024. It's possible that he could be power crept out of the game. And I mean, he's been in the game for a very long time. And so that should say a lot about how good he is, but even still, I mean, people thought we would never retire YSG and here we are. So Guan, you could be next on the chopping block next let's talk about William for a second and I actually I'm a little bit torn with this one right because I think that William is one of the best supportive commanders in the game right now his active skill has a March speed reduction also the target can't benefit from skill damage bonuses and he gives you and up to five nearby ally or friendly troops rage per second and defense it's either 10 or 20 percent depending on if you actually max the skill plus he has some instant proc damage here which is pretty nice there's actually a lot to love about William so I was hesitant to put him on this list but I will just say that a 1500 damage factor three target AoE in a rectangle shape is really starting to feel like it's on the low end here i mean in today's current meta 2000 is kind of like the bare minimum if you look at things like Wan yu Scipio, liu che herman prime juge leong joan of arc prime nevsky huo all those commanders have at least 2000 damage factor and a lot of them are aoe sometimes three sometimes five targets and so 1500 is feeling quite low and so when we think about you know what what would it take for william to kind of be pushed out of the meta well I mean if they released a Liu Che for cavalry it's like I mean yeah you might feel bad about losing this rage per second and the defense but like if the damage factor goes through the roof then it's like I mean you you probably are going to go for the raw damage right obviously that's an oversimplification and you'd have to compare the entire kit but like I think we're at a point in the power creep where we have to start considering that William might not be around for that much longer again he's insanely good today I used him on my recent KBK I still think he's part of the best five army lineup in the open field today but I'm very concerned about that damage factor
very concerned now the last commander in the caution tier is actually going to be Osher Bonapal, which is one of the most recent commanders to be put into the game and if you guys have been watching my videos over the last couple of weeks I've talked about how Osher Bonapal, you can use him in the open field if he's expertise and he's going to perform really well and in many cases he may be one of your best choices for an open field archer commander but and this is a big but this is a Kim Kardashian okay he kind of falls in the same bucket as Justinian when you're talking about open field right remember that's what this video is about now the benefit he has over Justinian is that his damage factor is 2500 plus he's hitting four other targets for 15 which it's aoe right and aoe is has been king and rise of kingdoms forever so a little bit better than Justinian in that regard however everything else on his kit is very reminiscent he's kind of a vanilla beat stick there is from an open field pvp perspective there's no debuffs here there's no buffs there's no supportive nature there's nothing there's stats there's march speed 20 percent skill damage and 15 percent less normal damage taken plus he will rng give himself a random buff here which all these buff your one army they don't buff anybody else right so as a single commander as a single army he's going to perform really well but historically you know when you build a five army lineup you're probably going to be looking at things that are maybe more supportive in nature like the william like we just talked about or things that are going to debuff the target so that way your other armies can really deal a lot of damage there and while ashurbanipal might be one of the best things that you could be using right now for archers assuming you're a rally leader most players should not be getting ashurbanipal right but assuming that you have him already as an archer main he's probably one of your best choices i still think that you know you should be cautious when you invest in him because as an open field commander could be power crept out of the game in the next year or so if the next archer cycle releases something like herman prime or like juge leong you'll probably run Julia Leong with Herman and then you would run maybe Boudicca Prime with whoever that new commander is and then you know Ashurbanipal is not even going to be in a two army lineup right so just something to consider moving on to the concerned tier we have Tarek okay now if you've watched any of my recent videos again I've talked about how Tarek right now is a pretty decent choice that you could be using and in my recent KVK I used a 5515 Tarek and he performed really well but when we look to the future of like is he going to be a commander that I use in the next year I think probably not I'm probably going to drop Tarek with the next infantry release right like he kind of falls into the same category as Justinian where he is a vanilla beat stick yes he does have a rage reduction here which is nice and 15 percent more damage just flat damage is really good but there's no kind of tanky stats here there's no like buffing there's no massive like AOE debuffs or anything like that and his single target damage factor I mean unless you're surrounded this is lower than Justinian it's lower than Asher Bonapal it's even lower than Boudicca Prime right so if we take that into consideration like okay sure if he's surrounded it's higher but I think a lot of players who would have invested in a 5515 Tarek a few months ago could consider investing in Gorgo instead and if you pair her with Liu Che you actually might have a better performing army and so we've already kind of seen Tarek lose a little bit of relevance there now of course you could still run like CPO Tarek or something like that or again like I ran Liu Che Tarek is a decent option but I'd be willing to bet that unless you're running three or more infantry armies which why would you do that but unless that's the case I would say over the next year probably most players are going to stop using Tarek in the open field that is just my prediction and I could be wrong next up is YSG and I've actually made an entire video talking about YSG and you know how it relates to new players and their early game progression and things like that so if you missed that video go ahead and check it out on the channel but I think right now you know you could make the case that running a two army lineup with uh you know being an archer main that YSG lands in that second army slot behind Boudicca Prime sure I totally understand that but again when you look at his kit here it's very vanilla the damage factor is nice with the 50 percent skill damage bonus but he's very squishy and i do think that you have a lot of better options for your archer commanders i'm actually not going to get into ysg too much in this video because i feel like i've talked about him a lot over the last couple of videos you guys are probably tired of hearing about it if you want to know more about what i think about ysg watch that dedicated video next let's talk about Alexander the Great and funny enough a couple of months ago I actually made a video similar to this and obviously the meta has evolved over the last few months which is why I'm updating that video but in that video previously I had Alexander the Great in the warning category and this is the first commander in this video and the only commander a little bit of foreshadowing that is actually falling backwards on the list my opinion of Alexander the Great 
has gotten more favorable with the release of Liu Che. I think Liu Che primary with Alexander the Great secondary performs really well in the open field because Liu Che does a lot of the heavy lifting that Alexander the Great needed. And unlike, for example, Guan Yu with Alex, a pair that a lot of people used to use, the Liu Che actually takes less skill damage than Guan Yu and also has 20% infantry defense, unlike the Guan Yu. And it has a little bit more march speed than the Guan Yu. So Alexander the Great is just a little bit safer behind the Liu Che to do the things that Alexander the Great has always done. And that is when he's expertise, up to three nearby enemy troops take 30% more damage for four seconds. That is an extremely powerful debuff, guys. Plus your Liu Che will be immune to all damage reducing effects here. And Liu Che, and Alexander the Great both have a ton of infantry attack, which means the five target AOE on Liu Che is going to hit like a truck. So all that to say that Alexander the Great is actually in a better position now than he was probably six months ago, eight months ago. However, he still lands in the concern tier because I think Liu Che is the only commander that I would even consider running Alexander the Great with anyway. Okay. Some people still try to run Guan Alex. I don't think that's viable anymore more at least not in like a seed kingdoms or you know imperium kingdoms or anything like that and it's not that you can't run that it's just that you have so many other better options that like why would you right so i think alexander the great a little bit of a, a little bit of silver lining for him uh, especially if you're an in infantry main watching this video i think there's a lot to love about him these days with liu che but besides that oh really concerned about him right and so if we get our next infantry cycle if that comes out with another just solid commander then Alexander the Great could get the boot once again, and then we'll continue running maybe Guan Scipio with Liu Che and whoever's new, or you'll run Scipio Liu Che and then whoever's new with Guan or something like that. I don't know. So I'm very concerned about Alexander the Great, but he's actually somehow holding on still. Next up is Nebu, and Nebu just is a weaker version of Ashurbanipal. Basically, the reason that Nebu isn't in the warning category is because some players do actually still like using Nebu strictly for the defense, march speed, and the 15% more damage here. Plus, he's got the rage reduction, which Ashurbanipal does not have. He doesn't have any debuffs. Nebu does. So, yes, he has lower damage factor slightly, but there are still some people that will use Nebu. So, he's feeling very old right now. And there's probably only archer mains that are still using him and they're using him in probably their third army okay but i think you know really his days are are numbered i think his days are numbered he's a value build at 5515 but i think it's you know he's kind of a beat stick right that's we've been talking about that in this video he 1500 damage factor feeling a little bit weak okay the benefit he has over somebody like William is that it's five target and it's fan shaped as opposed to three target rectangle. But there's a lot of competition going up against Nebu these days. And so it's feeling a bit crowded. And when we're thinking about who we're going to start removing from these lineups, I think Nebu is at the uh, top of that list. Next up is Honda Civic. Okay. Now the thing about Honda Civic here is that a lot of people use him as a universal secondary and he's filled that role pretty nicely, but 1250 as a damage factor is feeling really pathetic. You guys, his March speed is not nice and he gets a lot of universal attack here but the thing is a lot of people also used him for that march speed reduction and unfortunately a lot of newer commanders have been releasing with march speed reduction and so this aspect of him as like a generic slowdown snare commander like he, it's not really that special anymore and his damage factor again is weak so basically uh, once a new sort of universal leadership commander comes out honda is done okay most people aren't even using honda these days anyway so he's kind of already got one foot out the door but i just want to let you guys know that if you are still running honda and he's doing decently okay that's fine but i think you know a year from now is anyone going to be using him probably not very underwhelming for 2024. on the topic of leadership commanders i think trajan also falls into this category i know a lot of the seven march giga whales who have built their accounts around trajan and having that leadership set a lot of them might still be using him because why not you've invested in him already you might as well flesh out your seven army lineup with him and i totally get that but if you don't have trajan already if you're watching this video it's like oh man that's a really expensive investment for a massive dice roll right like the damage factor here basically does not exist 400 i mean what, what is a caesar like this is this was a caesar's expertise like this is awful of course you know we're not measuring him based on his damage factor we're measuring him based on his supportive nature because he is a support commander but i don't know i'm just a little bit jaded towards trajan okay his rage regen is nice okay but since he's come into the game we've got joan of our prime in the game and she gives you 
rage as well the accessory meta has been pretty much fully fleshed out everybody is basically running a horn of fury on every army and maybe people are even running at least one crox war drum as well i think there's a lot of ways to get rage these days especially if there's a william in your lineup right so i don't know again i'm not saying trajan is bad at this very moment but uh, i think over the next year there could be a really good chance that he is not used at all next we got to talk about henry and there's really not much more to say here again he's a single target vanilla beat stick you basically have to expertise him if you want to use him in the open field which is extremely expensive and why would you do that when you could get somebody like Osher Bonapal, for example right herman prime for example there's lots of better options like Zhuge Liang, and even still i'd rather have Boudicca prime than henry in the open field so yeah again not saying you can't do well with him in the open field i'm just saying that there's no aoe skill damage there's no massive debuffs to the target march speed is conditional for outside your territory and it's not like he's buffing your armies around you so again single target vanilla beat stick a year from now you know you're probably not going to use him in the open field unless you're running three or more archer marches and the last commander for the concern tier is sargon the great now he was not even on this list for the last iteration of this series okay when he first came out i thought very highly of him when liu che was announced i thought oh maybe this is it maybe this is the savior for Sargon maybe the extra procs of the basic attacks are going to make this single target damage over time deal even more damage and that is true but it wasn't enough to save Sargon and so much so that the flaw in his kit is completely apparent to me now okay uh and I mean truthfully a lot of people have been saying this since he came out he deals damage too slow and as an infantry main I was clinging I was like no Sargon's good and it was copium let's just be real it's copium okay damage over time sucks in today's meta because it's all about instant proc damage it's about DPS okay it's about dealing as much damage in as short of amount of time as possible because in open field fights you're not just staying connected to one target okay in order for this skill to get its full duration first of all he's probably your secondary commander okay if you're running him like behind Guan Yu for or something like that maybe he's your primary let's say he's your primary let's just be honest let's say maybe it's primary Sargon with CPO behind him or something like that right you have to build up your entire rage cycle okay and let's say you cast your active skill on turn eight you have to be staying attached to that target until at least turn 13 for you to get the maximum amount of damage out of Sargon okay so you have to stick to your target for 13 seconds and I'm not saying that that's not possible of course that's completely possible but when you actually look at how you're fighting in the open field a lot of times you're going in you're fighting you pop your active skill and then you retreat so that way you have a really good positioning you don't want to be caught out of position because that's when you really get swarmed down that's when you really get destroyed if you retreat early with Sargon you're leaving damage on the table okay if you only tick for two seconds you're only dealing a thousand damage factor to a single target like that's really nothing even if you tick for three seconds that's 1500 four seconds is 2000 okay and in that time frame you could have had Scipio hit a three target 2k or you could have had Guan Yu hit a three target 2k or you could have had Liu Che hit a five target 2250 so this being single target and damage over time is like this is even worse than something like Henry for example who has an instant proc yeah the total damage is lower but at least every time it pops you know it's going to deal the max damage and with Sargon that's not the case and I would argue that a majority of the time you're probably leaving damage on the table unless you're in one of those rare circumstances where you could just stay on a target and pound them sure but I think at this point in rise of kingdoms we know that a majority of your damage comes from your active skills and when you have a commander that's not AoE and his active skill is dealing damage slower than pretty much any other active skill in the entire game I don't think there's anyone who deals damage slower than Sargon I don't know I'm not saying you can't use him I'm not okay I I, I know people use him with some good effect but my Sargon is on the bench and I can't really imagine a world where he comes off of it unless something changes with his active skill moving on to the warning tier we have unfortunately Artemisia lands herself in the warning tier and this video has been a little bit long so let me just refresh you guys the warning warning tier is for commanders that have one or fewer viable marches in the open fields and they are generally outclassed and I would say that of course if you have Boudicca Prime expertise and you have Artemisia already then you can run that army that's fine it's going to be mega slow but it'll be decent but besides that there is literally no other use that I can think of for Artemisia in the open field 
and even still Boudicca Prime has other commanders that she can be paired with Artemisia doesn't right so in 2024 why would you invest in Artemisia when you have so many other better options it's just you're just not going to right in the same category is Zhang Yu in my mind okay I would only recommend players run Zhang Yu if they're running three or more cavalry armies and in that scenario I mean Zhang Yu is definitely going to be the weakest of the bunch his damage factor is on the low side and it's actually worse than you think because each additional target reduces it by 25 percent as opposed to the 15 percent which is standard across literally I think every other commander has the 15 percent Zhang Yu is the only one that's reduced by 25 which is insane his defense reduction is outclassed by Nevsky of course Nevsky is only single target but still Zhang Yu is a glass cannon and he's outclassed by Huo for example Huo's single target damage it's in the same ballpark and even still you know you'd have to hit all three targets for it to be even close for Zhang Yu whereas Huo is guaranteed to get his max damage every time he pops so yeah there's just really no reason in my opinion to invest in Zhang Yu in 2024 and then to round out the warning category uh, I threw in Pakal Herald okay I still see some people try to make this combination work in kvk and if you're in like a c or d seed kingdom and you're like a whale then maybe this will work for you but the Pakal Herald days I think are kind of over you can you know if you're going to do a cheeseburger tactic then this is probably still your go-to although I think Gorgo Liu Che might be better at this point strictly because it's slow but it trades pretty well in general and Gorgo has the lower rage requirement so she could pop the active skills a little bit faster than the Pakal Herald of course Herald has Sanford Bridge but at the end of the day like the skill damage from both these guys is kind of on the low side these days anyway and with all the super powerful Archer commanders in the game these days you really can melt Pakal Herald pretty easily so there's really not much of a reason to invest in this pairing anymore and I think most people know that I think most people have stopped investing in Pakal Herald already but in case you're a little bit late to the show late to the party their days are pretty much over and that's pretty much it guys um if I didn't talk about a commander in this video that means that they're in some sort of gray area or a niche use case like for example Attila or this is just my kind of personal opinion I don't know I don't really have any data to suggest this but if we do see a smite damage cavalry commander in the future Attila might have use right so there's some commanders that are like are kind of niche niche roles gray area in between I'm not super sure um or they're just so bad that it's like you wouldn't even consider them you wouldn't consider them in the first place right like all the gold key commanders obviously don't invest your universals in them you know Tamiris Edward like all those commanders don't just don't okay so yeah hopefully that clears it up and if you made it all the way to the end of the video I hope you guys will drop a thumbs up on it it'll really help out the channel a ton it'll get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below your thoughts what do you think about my analysis of these commanders do you think it's spot on I think it's I honestly guys I think this video is the harsh truth okay I know a lot of people don't want to hear it I do think it is the harsh truth so let me know what you guys think down there and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace